In this video, I will speak about how to survive the holidays with a chronic illness. The holidays often put a lot of pressure on us. You might be thinking, well, this is supposed to be a time of joy and family coming together and celebrating. But for those with chronic illness, the same actions that bring others joy can leave those with chronic illness drained. You already have your reduced energy bucket, you're trying to handle your day-to-day -day tasks and all your responsibility, and now it feels like all of a sudden there's even more responsibilities. Decorating the house for the holidays, for example. It's beautiful, but that's a huge energy drain. Having get-togethers with the family. It's wonderful to spend time with family, but with those with chronic illness, there's so much unpredictability that planning can often be really tough. You might get new symptoms or a migraine comes up and it makes planning for events like this even more stressful. This might also be the time when a lot of strong feelings come up, like grief about the person who you used to be before or comparing it to previous holiday seasons. In this video, I talk about three ways to make the holidays feel more like a celebration rather than a chore. Number one, prioritize and plan. So I wish we could just say to our bodies, Hi, dear body. Um, yeah, I'm going to my grandma's house for dinner tomorrow. Can you please cooperate and not have any flare-ups? But that's not really how it works, does it? But remember that you do have a right and a responsibility to look out for yourself, no matter what time of the year it is. You have to put yourself first, yourself and your health. So one question that I like to ask my clients is, what can still make this holiday season feel joyful? What's one or two of your favorite activities that you do that means and signifies it's the holidays for you? For example, for me, um, I used to bake a lot when it was the holidays. Granted, when I had really low energy, I, I couldn't do that. You know, standing in the kitchen, it's heat, it's too much. But I chose to bake things that were, you know, kind of not the kind of baking goods that would go in the oven. And I chose to bake a lot less because it was easier. But that still for me signified the holidays. For many, they might reply that it's spending time with family. So perhaps you spend time with family and then you spend the day resting. Or you spend time with family but you don't participate in hosting a get-together or baking or doing other um, activities that require so much energy. Now, this might all be easier said than done, which is where number two comes in. You cannot do this on your own. So you must ask for help in advance. So let's say you're going to someone's house um, for a holiday party. One tip would be, for example, to speak with them and tell them how long you could stay. Now, depending on your comfort level with this person and we're talking about your diagnosis, you might not want to share too many details, but it's often helpful to share just enough so that people imagine it. Something like, I could only stay two or three hours because otherwise I'll get too fatigued. That kind of gives the person a clear limit of, okay, look, it'll be this many hours and this is the reason why. Instead of, I can't stay long, I'll have to go. Now, sharing also about an invisible illness is quite tough, so this is up to you. Sometimes, though, this kind of sharing about your illness can really strengthen relationships as it brings in this new, renewed honesty. And what better time than the holidays when families are getting together to have these kind of honest conversations? They're not easy. They're tough conversations to have. But many times people have noticed an increased connection and an increased uh, feeling of openness and connectivity after having conversations like this. Now, when it comes to also kind of setting boundaries and being honest, um, one other statement that you could, for example, implement would be, I am happy to do blank now, but then I cannot do blank later. As we all know, those with fatigue uh, only have so much of an energy bucket. So it's important to prioritize tasks and to communicate effectively so that others will know exactly I could do this, but I might not be able to do that. Don't overpromise and hope for the best. Plan instead for rest, for lots of rest, because of how taxing these activities can be. Now, the last thing that I want to talk about is one other thing that's really tough for, about the holidays for many people can be that it sometimes serves as a reminder of how you used to be before or various holidays and all this can often bring up very strong feelings of grief. Um, mostly for those that I work with that have long COVID, they will often refer back to previous holidays and you know they were able to bake four or five cakes and decorate the house and host parties and all of a sudden they feel like that's been taken away from them and like their identity has really changed. Now, we might often imagine how things might have been, you know, if, if I wasn't sick, if this hasn't happened to me, it's not the healthiest to dwell on what is and isn't. 
But having said that, and a big disclaimer, it is okay to grieve. So for example, one other tip, if let's say you're at a um, family gathering and you, these strong feelings are coming over you, you really feel as if grief is coming over you, it's often helpful to have almost like a plan A and a plan B. So for example, the plan A would be spending time with your family, but if you find that these feelings are coming on really strongly over you, have plan B be something that feels very nourishing to you, something like taking a bubble bath or something that feels just really good to you and really recharges you and feels really, really good for your soul. If, for example, being around your family might be too much at that point. What also helps with the strong feelings that this holiday season might evoke is looking at what you do have to be grateful for. That's when gratitude practice comes in handy and journaling as well. Losing our dreams to chronic illness causes major grief, but we have to start seeing it not as a permanent loss, but instead a simple misdirection. Things will not always be this way. It can often even be viewed as almost a time of rebirth, right? There's a new year coming up. You could even think of it as a time to make new traditions. Who says you have to decorate the Christmas tree or your house or anything else or bake four cakes? What is the the magic of this holiday season for you? What is the spirit of it? And what is the one or two things that are most important to you? You could kind of almost think of it as a way to leave all the flashy stuff behind and to really, really focus on what's important to you and your soul. I hope you found these tips helpful. I'd love to hear your biggest takeaway down in the comments below. Let me know what have you found that helps you the most during the holidays. And if you want more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to my channel. If you hit the bell, you'll get a notification each time I post a new video. Take care and I'll see you next time.